on episode 69, we're talking about making promises and keeping them, of course. Hey everybody, what's up and welcome to The 88 Show. This is the internet's only dental show where we answer marketing's most important questions. That's what we do here. My name is Joshua Scott and this is episode 69 coming at you the end of May and man, just when you say it's the end of May, I'm just like, what? Uh, I mean, it's last week of school here in the Midwest. Summer's beginning and uh, we're into that time of the year again. Uh, got a great episode for you today. Thanks so much for being here. This month's topic, uh, if you've been following along, is flying the friendly skies. And it started off with uh, kind of off of United Airlines big uh, fiasco with Dr. David Dow uh, deplaning him and you have probably have seen that video very very disturbing video and so last week's uh, or the episode a few weeks ago we were talking about how your marketing can actually build trust and based off a few surveys uh, that were out there recently and today I want to talk about making promises because I think when the conversation comes down to how can our marketing create trust and how can we uh, communicate with patients in a way that creates trust or communicates trustworthiness I think so much of it comes back to what are we promising and so today let's talk about that I want to give you five points on promises you should be making so let's talk about creating trust with our marketing and one of the first things we can do is to make promises to our patients I'm a big believer in that so I want to kind of walk through four promises that we should be making to patients and so number one is people first people first and I know and especially in a healthcare world that shouldn't be that this should be assumed uh, but anywhere in the service world this should be the primary promise that we make this is where United ultimately failed uh, people should be treated with dignity first and obviously that was not the case okay um, I recently had a conversation with a, a prosthodontist here in town in the Columbus area and he told me his marketing strategy early on uh, was so unique it actually made me stop and think about it because what he would do is go to all the local dentists around town and tell them send me all your tough cases send me all the situations you get in the tough spots in the cases you don't want to work on the patients that are difficult send them to me and inevitably what would happen is a patient would come to him and was angry for whatever reason maybe the treatment didn't go as planned or maybe the the GP got in over their head and now something's wrong and so this doctor would say to them I'm gonna fix this and I'm not gonna charge you and he would diffuse the patient's anger and then he would call the referring dentist and say I'm gonna fix this and I'm not gonna charge you and he would re, re uh, diffuse their anxiety as well about any possible legal situations or or lawsuits but he would treat both parties with dignity and he was putting people first because of that I mean he built a, a big prosthodontic practice here in town and is very well respected uh, in this part of the state and, and all over the country honestly for some of his research uh, that he's advanced and so that's what putting people first does all right and then number two is transparency I mean I don't know that we can talk about this enough because what United did their actions they immediately justified them on the fine print that's written into any airline ticket and I remember having people go well you know they're legally allowed to do that and so I'm like there's legally allowed and then there's like what should happen right in treating people first and and operating with transparency and so I, I think that that's the question as a dental practice, I would tell you to always be overly transparent with insurance and finances, period. I, I can't stress this enough. How many phone calls I've been on where I hear the, the, um, the lady at the front answer the phone and it's immediately a question about insurance and it's worded something along the lines of, yes, we accept Delta Premier, but we submit to Delta PPO. 
and the patient, and you know what I'm doing there. It's like you, you take Delta Premier, you don't take Delta PPO, but we'll submit that. And it's a little bit of a play on words and probably saying it fast and, and so that the patient maybe doesn't pick it up. But in the end, patients don't quite understand that. And the, the ones that are fun to listen to are the ones that are like, say that again, I'm not sure that I understand you. And they start pushing back. And we begin to word things in a way where I don't know that it's completely transparent and easy for patients. If a patient calls in and says, what is going to be my cost on an initial new patient exam? I think we ought to be able to tell them. You know, if they're calling about dental implants, let's not talk about that. We need a consultation. But a new patient exam, a basic routine entry level procedure in our practice should be very straightforward and transparent. Anytime I see bad reviews, man, 90% of the time it's right here. It's, it's not being transparent about fees and insurance. So build that into your practice. So number three is a promise of professionalism, okay? Professionalism. I think when you're a professional, then you are promising to find solutions and work with people when there are issues. And this is where United, where it broke down. Um, like how much would it have cost them to put their four pilots that they needed to get to Louisville to hire a car? to drive them from Chicago to Louisville. Is that an inconvenience? Yeah, would it have been a better solution to this problem? Probably, right? And so that's what being professional is about. It's, it's, it's your brand, it's your logo, it's your photography. It's, it's saying we're going to communicate that we're professional because we are. And then we're gonna act like it when you're here. So be professional, make the promise to your patients that you will always treat them in a professional manner. All right, and then last is advancement. It's making a promise of advancement to your patients. Um, you know, the logistics of this whole deal with United were the fact that these four passengers got on the flight, boarded the flight, and then they realized that they were overbooked and had to get four people off of the flight. Meaning like if that would have taken place before they boarded passengers, whole lot easier to deal with, right? But everybody's in their seat, seat belts on, comfy, headphones in, and now we need four people to get off. And part of that's like, it's just like, what year do we live in? I mean, this is 2017, like, did you not know that before you boarded the flight? Or was it so last minute that you had to make the change? But, you know, part of it is like, we have the technology, you know, it, it, airline boarding systems are advanced to that point that we know these things before we board airplanes. And so as, as a dentist, as a dental practice, what are you advancing? What are you promising to your patients to stay ahead of? Um, I think there's so many advances in dentistry today, but you know, one of the, the big things I'm seeing right now is, is along the lines of sleep medicine. And not just sleep apnea, a lot of people are getting into that, but sleep medicine and going further than just sleep apnea, but diagnosing uh, sleep patterns in adults. I love that Charles Mayo said in 1915, it is evident that the next great step in medical progress in the line of preventative medicine should be made by the dental profession. So this was 1915, and I, I, I love that, 100 years ago, saying to the dental industry, we should be the next ones advancing preventative medicine. And he was saying it to an industry, to medicine that's typically been known to, uh, it was, is, is about preventing and healing. And whereas dentistry was probably look, looked at as diagnosing and fixing, and what he's saying is those roles can swap or dentistry can have just as powerful of a role in that way as well. And I think I see that a lot with sleep medicine. I think the potential to, um, to prevent and to heal is massive. And I think dentistry has a unique position there to get involved. And so whether it's sleep medicine, whether it's, it's other technology and treatment, that's not the point. The point is, is that we are promising to our patients to progress. We are promising to advance. And I think that's important. All right, guys, that wraps up episode 69. Thanks so much for being here. Want to leave you with one quick thought, and that is to make promises and then over deliver. 
uh, it, it, and probably because the old adage or thinking is you under promise and then over deliver, right? Like set the expectations so low and then surprise them with actually what you deliver. But, but that's the easy way out. And, and the harder thing is to make promises and over deliver on them. And if you can do that, you're going to end up building a massive amount of trust with your patients. So question of the episode, what kind of promises do you need to make? What kind of promises do you need to make to your patients? Question of the episode, give it some thoughts. The article, find the links down below, F Flying the Friendly Skies. Would love to know your thoughts, comments on that. And then last, uh, follow me, best place is on Instagram, uh, at Joshua Scott, keep up with me, contact me. That's the best place to do it. And that's it. Guys, hope you are enjoying the beginning of summer and I will catch you on a next episode.